very clear message from Frank Lampard. He needs time. Is he right? Yes, of, of course. I think, as he mentioned, you know, new players coming in is a process. Uh, and the, the new players will have, have time to gel. I think, as we talk about Kai Havertz, you know, trained four or five days. I think when he gets into it and has a good pre-season with the team, uh, if Ben can come back, Chilwell start, Thiago Silva to come into the team. I, I, I've, I'm very confident that in two, three weeks, this team will be up and running and, and, and get that fitness and get that confidence and get that belief that, OK, now we're a team, the players are back playing, they'll be fine. Beforehand, you thought it was going to happen today. Yeah. You, were, you were quite confident. <laughs> uh, you got to be optimistic just that. You sit next to me as well. <laughs> Do you take positives? Can you see positives from, from that Chelsea performance? No, listen, you know, I'm, I'm always going to sit here and, and, and back Chelsea. But, uh, yes, I... As he mentioned, the Reese James, uh, I think his performance today was was very good. Again, Kurt Zuma, as, as Frank mentioned, attacking balls. Uh, but yes, he needs time. He needs time. I think if you look at Klopp, he had a couple of years to get his team, you know, he, his philosophy and, and put that on the team. And now they've won trophies from it. So I think Frank needs time. Uh, we have to, you know, go on this journey and this process. And hopefully at the end of it, we will see silverware. I mean, I, I think the, the problem Frank's got, and I mentioned it on uh, Monday, is that obviously he's new to the job, he's had a year at Derby, he comes into Chelsea, does a really good job last year, and then you make all these changes, and it's difficult to manage change. I think for even the great managers, Klopp hasn't really done that in some ways. I mean, at Liverpool, maybe over the next year, 18 months, that this team will evolve and maybe players will move on, and then almost a, the second team of Klopp will come. Uh, I'm not even sure Pep Guardiola has really had that in his management. You're talking yet. about the sort of the big turnover of players yeah, at one time. Yeah, huge turnover of players. He's talking about he's getting his patterns of play. I thought that was interesting. He was talking there about what they like on the ball. He seems pleased with them defensively. And yes, I, I thought Liverpool dominated the first half, but he didn't create a big chance, I don't remember. So that's the positive he will take from it. But me looking at the game already, I think of last season and I think of Chelsea being a 4-3-3 team and now and again Frank throwing a three at the back end. Tactically in big games, he beat Jose Mourinho twice, he beat Pep Guardioli and I thought there was real good signs tactically from Frank and how he changed it. He went to 4-2-3-1 at Brighton. Havertz was on the right. Today he's gone with him on a false nine. And he's obviously a quality player, there's no doubt about that. But I do look and I'm already thinking, even though it's only two games in, where does Havertz sort of play? Where will he play in this team? He will play. Obviously, Frank's got some idea where he wants to play. He's played big money for him. But where does he fit into a 4-3-3? He almost looks like a, a, a number 10. And we just don't see them in, in football as much now. So he's either going to have to be part of the front three from a wide position or he's going to have to be part of a midfield three and be the attacking player from the midfield. But certainly where he played today... I don't think that probably suited Chelsea. It may suit him. I know he has played there for Leverkusen, the false nine, but I think it's just almost working out where he's going to play all these players. Do you see an answer to that it's problem? It, I think it's time. Is he becoming a problem already, the Kai Havertz? No, not at all. He's a young man that's just come to the country. I think he trained with a club for five days. He gets thrown in against Brighton. You could see he was, he was miles off it. He played half a game today. He didn't really have a lot of the board. I don't think it suited him playing as a, as a striker. You've got to give the lad time. It's hard. It's really it's hard enough moving when you're an English player moving to another club, let alone when you come from a foreign country. We have to, we have to be very careful. We're judging a player and we're almost labelling where he's going to play. He's a, you know, he's a tremendous... But they've got lots of talent. Well, where the would best you, where player... Would you, where would you play him? I don't, what, you've got to give it time, surely, no? You've got oh, to, no, of course. You've got, you got Pulisic to come in. You've got Zayec as well, two quality players. I think he, he's a number 10 and he looks like he's going to go in head like, again, with Mason Mount. I think with the three that they played in there today in the midfield... I think to a certain extent they need a little bit more craft, someone that's going to link the play. Because when you've got three, they're all the same. Can, you end up with Kante being the player that's probably your most progressive and trying to get on the ball and make things happen. That's not really his job. I look at N'Golo Kante or Kante as the sort of player that will break it up, to make it, you know, get it to players that can do that job. So I think he's a, he's a number 10. You're signing for a lot of money, but we can't. Surely, are we sitting here now and not questioning him as a player? You know, he's been here two minutes, really. We've got to give him lots of time. I not question him as a player at all. What I'm saying is, Frank... He's got new players coming in. He's still trying to work out probably where they all play. And what I'm saying is, Havertz has played two positions in two games. Not questioning his ability at all. But what we're saying is, that'll be the thing for Frank going forward. How he gets these players in and what system he almost settles on. You don't want to be changing system every week. But it may be, as Jamie mentioned, if he plays as number 10, Frank plays a lot more 4-2-3-1 this season. But it wasn't a system he played last season. So that's 
what I mean by saying it almost feels like they're almost starting again. Not fully, but you've got to integrate a lot of players. You may play a different system, and that's why it won't be easy for Frank. Yeah. I think he's a 10. I think the, other, the, other, the, the big plus for Chelsea in his two games has been Werner. He has looked sharp, actually, hasn't he? Let me get your perspective on Havertz. No, again, as, as I you know, said five minutes ago, he's been in England and trained with his team for five days. And we're expecting him to, you know, be the same as what he was in, in, in Leipzig. For me, it's impossible to, to produce that kind of performances as he, as he did before uh, for the previous team. It does take time to adjust, to adapt to a new team, to a, maybe a new philosophy, new teammates. Uh, he'll come good. He'll come good. I, I do agree where is his best position. And, and we talk about how good Pulisic was last season. How is he going to fit them all in? Will he have to release some players, maybe move Kanti around, Kovacic, uh, Jorginho? You know, will he have to shift a few of them to play his, his main them out stars? The club. Well, I don't know. If you want to start fitting maybe a Kai Havertz in a 10, then someone's got to go. So, you know, I don't know how you think about that. <laughs> 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 Let's put it on Jamie, 